Welcome to week seven, everybody. It's so good to have you back. Uh, you can see on the board, there's a lot happening back there. It gives you a clue to what our story is about today. But before we get into our story, I wanted to talk about a couple things. First, Bethlehem experience. December 12th, remember that. December 12th, we're going to have our Bethlehem experience. It's gonna be another drive-through and we're coming up with a whole new way to tell the story of Christ. It's gonna be unlike any other Bethlehem experience you've seen before. It's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be cool, you're gonna love it, and hopefully you're gonna learn something about the story of Jesus that you've never learned before. You might think, oh, I know everything about the story of Jesus, but we're gonna be doing it in a different way that tells a bigger story of what led up to the birth of Christ. So we're excited to have you all come on December 12th, all right? Second thing I wanna talk about is another shout out to Cole McKernan. He sent me the right answers from last week's questions. So shout out, Cole. Here's one more special shout out from your man, Dylan. Congratulations on getting your questions right this week, Cole. Yeehaw! 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 All right, congratulations, Cole, again. Now we're gonna go over a quick review of what we talked about last week, all right? So the part of the story that I didn't show you in the book was when Moses was a baby. Remember, Moses was put into the river by his mom and then he was taken out of the Nile River by an Egyptian princess. And we went from there, that's where we started our story. He grew up in Egypt, but then he left Egypt because he didn't like the way the Egyptians were treating his people, the Hebrews. And so after Moses left Egypt, he went near Mount Sinai and he was called up into the mountain where he saw God in a burning bush and God spoke to him and God showed his holiness and his glory and Moses had to take off his sandals and, and go before God. And God told him that Moses, that he wanted him to return to Egypt, to Egypt to rescue the Hebrews, right? It was about rescuing God's people. And Moses felt like he wasn't good enough, but God said, I am with you. You are good enough as long as I am with you. All right, so that was the essence of our story last time. That was our review. But before we get into our story for today, let's do our question and answer. And our question, my question for you this week stems from last week's story. So the first question is, if you can remember, think about the story that we talked about, Moses going up into Mount Sinai and seeing God in the burning bush. The first question would be for everybody, what animal, did God turn Moses' staff into? Can you remember that? What animal did God turn Moses' staff into? All right, and I'm gonna give a second question, a little bit harder question, but it's our second question. You can answer both, you can ask, uh, answer either one, and then you can just send it to me in an email right here, or however, or text it, however you, your parents want you to get me the answer. That's totally okay with me. So the second question is, what did God give Moses to make him into a great leader? If you remember, we talked about it at the very end of our story from last week. What did God give Moses to make him into a great leader? And it's also something God has promised all of us and that he's given us, okay? That's a clue. All right, so that's we're going right into our story now. The next stage of the story is Moses is going back to Egypt to rescue God's people. It's called Stubborn King Pharaoh Says No. All right, let's get at it. Stubborn King Pharaoh Says No. God's people were still slaves in Egypt, but God remembered his promise to rescue them. So God sent Moses to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Moses said, God says, let my people go. But stubborn Pharaoh said no to God. So Moses went down to the big river. He hit it with his staff, and all the water in Egypt turned to blood. Yuck! No one had anything to drink. Then Moses said to Pharaoh, let God's people go. But stubborn Pharaoh just said no. So God filled up the land of Egypt with frogs, gnats, and flies. If you looked inside your oven, ribbit. And if you looked inside the pantry, buzz. 
Pharaoh changed his mind and decided to say yes. He said, Moses, please pray to God for me. Moses prayed and God took away the frogs and gnats and flies. But stubborn Pharaoh changed his mind and would not let God's people go. Then all the cows and sheep in Egypt got sick. People had sores on their bodies. God sent hail, ice from the sky. He sent grasshoppers to eat the people's food. He covered all the land of Egypt with darkness. Pharaoh started crying. Oh Moses, I've made bad choices. I disobeyed God. Please stop these terrible plagues. God did stop the plagues, but then stubborn Pharaoh shouted, No way! I will not let the people go. Have you ever said no when you should have obeyed? Sometimes we are stubborn like Pharaoh, but that can't stop God's promise. Jesus can save us from a stubborn heart. All right. It's always an exciting part of the Bible, isn't it, to see all these crazy ways uh, that these plagues hit the Egyptians and, and what it must have been like to have lived through those type of things. It's really, really, really crazy that we don't see a lot of those type of things today. Uh, but you can imagine what it would have been like to have the air just be swarmed with flies and frogs everywhere and a river turned to blood. It was just insane. So it's always a fun, a fun story to read. Now today our topic of discussion and question is going to be about the same thing, and it's this. Have you ever said no when you should have obeyed? All of us have said no when we should have obeyed. We are all with sin. Think about those times when your parents asked you to do your chores, like wash the dishes or, or make your bed, clean your, clean your room, or other things like be nice to your sibling, but you just want what you want, and so you're mean instead so that you can get what you want. And like the book says, Sometimes we're stubborn like Pharaoh, but our stubbornness, it can't stop God because God saves us from our stubborn hearts. He loves us even when we sin, and the more that we walk with him in our life and know his love for us, the more God turns our stubborn and hard hearts into humble and soft hearts so that we can reflect his life even better here on earth because we're his hands and his feet here on earth, and we're meant to reflect his light, to reflect his love, to share his gospel that brings healing and changes the world. So let's praise God that though we are often, often stubborn, he can save us from our sin. He changes our lives through forever just by giving us his love and his grace. So praise God that he gave us his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins, to show us this love and the life that he lived and the death that he died for all of us. Let's pray. God, thank you for your son. Thank you for your love, for your grace. Thank you that you are greater than we are and that you can take our stubborn hearts and make them soft and humble and good to do your work and to do your service, that your Holy Spirit can transform us to make us more like you. Praise you, God, we pray. And we thank you for all your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Week 7 is in the books. Can't wait to see you next week for week 8. See ya!